So I'm going to let uh, Skip sort of take this thing off, and we're going to kind of bounce the microphone back and forth, and I think you'll see something really cool that happened. So this story truly is about tithing, and a lot of times we think of tithe as uh, a monetary gift, but in the Old Testament and the New Testament, they talk about tithing many other things. And in our case, it was something that we have been praying for for a long time. So those of you who don't know my wife and my story, we've been trying to have kids for the better part of two years, and we've gone through three miscarriages. About this time, uh, maybe next month, last year, we had been um, sticking after with Ben LaFoon and his wife, Rochelle. Ben's gonna be speaking tonight. But um, just asking them to pray for us because we were so down, downtrodden. I mean, our first miscarriage was on my birthday two years ago. And then it was just every time after that, we, we had no trouble getting pregnant. It was just uh, keeping the baby was, was the issue. And we went through a bunch of therapies, a bunch of doctors and specialists and nothing was happening. And so, we were, we were just broken. And I know some of you in this room have been there and I've, I, I know some of your stories. And for those of you who are out there who are, are currently struggling with this, my heart goes out to you. You know, this is, it's not a, uh, you're not alone. I just want you guys to know that. And, and for those of you who have gotten to the other side of that and, and experienced joy, God bless you. And you have a testimony to share. Um, so it's now June last year, and um, we, had, we had just been absolutely crushed. And, and my wife was done, she had given up, and she said, God, I don't even wanna try anymore because I'm tired of being let down. And I said, well, honey, let's, let's pray. And we were looking and um, I was just reminded of the story in the New Testament where I believe it was Paul said, that for those of you who um, are sick, um, ask the elders of your church to lay hands on you and pray. And so, we grabbed this guy after service uh, one day and asked him to pray for us. And I'll let him pick up the story here. So uh, I noticed for two or three weeks in a row after third service, of course, I have to lock the church up I'm in charge of operations. And so uh, me and Jimmy kind of go around and, and I noticed that um, him and his wife, Maggie, as, as well as Benjamin and Rochelle, and there's usually a couple of other people that y'all invited in that prayer. I noticed after third service, they were staying late. They were in the worship center. I noticed there were a lot of tears. I noticed there was a lot of praying. And I sort of kind of got everything squared away and came back. And by the time I came back, the first two weeks I saw them, they had already kind of kind of gone. And so the third week uh, that I saw them doing this, I had to, I mean, I'm a campus pastor. I'm supposed to see what's up, right? Yeah. It's probably part of my job. So I go up to them and I say, and I, as I started to approach, uh, Skip actually, approached me and he said, Pastor Al, would you pray with us? Because we've been trying to have a baby. We've had some miscarriage. It's, it's, been, a, it's been a hard couple of years and, and you can see the emotion on his face. And I said, I would be, I would be honored uh, to pray uh, with you and lay hands on you and, and your wife. And that would be an honor to me. Absolutely. So we go over and it's a, it's a prayer that you can't really explain. Uh, and the Holy Spirit just comes into something and it was, I just, I don't even remember the words. I, I, I just, I just remember the power and, and feeling the power of God in this circle of people. And we were praying and, and I never felt uh, moved so much. We were all broke from the prayer and we said, amen. And we we're just pouring out, man. I, every one of us were pouring out. I pulled them to the side and I said, listen. And I was just, cause I've seen so many people pray and, and things not, we prayed for a full out miracle. And I mean, we prayed for a full out miracle. Uh, and I told him, I said, listen, I'll, we're gonna pray for an incredible miracle, but understand this, sometimes you're trying to hold on to something and God's got a different plan and you're trying to hold on to what you want. So understand that there's kids out there that need adoption. And I'm just trying to encourage them because, you know, maybe it was my lack of faith. I, I, I don't know, but I've seen so many trials. And so this powerful prayer and they leave and, and, and I'm going to back up on the story just a little bit, not to confuse you. Two weeks earlier, uh, I'm, you guys know I have to work and say the tithing and do the tithe thing on Sunday morning. Somebody's got to come up and give this message on the offering before we take up the buckets. So I run out of material. I'm doing this all the time. And I'm like, I go to Pastor Mark and I'm like, out of material, man. Malachi 310, I've, I've said it like 20 times. And, you know, you Deuteronomy. I went through all the scriptures. I said, Mark, I need something. 
something for Sunday for the offering. And he said, there's a story about tithing in the Bible. And he said, a story about a, a woman named Hannah. Now, Hannah was barren. Couldn't have any kids. Now, this right. is before I even talked to Skip. Uh, you know, I saw them in their crowd, but hadn't, hadn't approached them or anything. And so he said, it's a story about Hannah. She's barren. She has a husband that has several wives. Uh, I can't even remember wh which book it's in right now. Uh, but um, First, Samuel. First Samuel, he knows it because he's memorized it, which is part of the story. So what's crazy is Hannah's <laughs> barren and all the other wives are making fun of her. I mean, because that's where your significance really comes from when you're a wife is how you bear children. And so, I mean, they're dogging her and they're making her feel horrible. And she just can't, can't have a baby barren for years. So she, she cries out to God um, and she says, Father, please give me a son. Just, just give me one child. I just want one child. That's all I want. And she made a promise to God. She said, if you give me that child, I'll give him back to you after I'm done nursing him. I'll give him back to you. It's a story of tithe. It's a story of giving back what God gives you is what it is. So what happens? God gives her a child. One year goes by and she goes to the priest at the temple and she hands her one year old, approximately one year old, off to him and says, this is God's child. You'll be raising him from now on. I told him I'd give him back to God. And he's yours now. Left him at the temple. He became one of the greatest prophets of all time. Samuel. Incredible story. I'll tell you how God blesses that. After Samuel, she had five more kids. So when you're obedient, are you feeling that? Am I preaching to anybody right now? So, so incredible that he then blessed her five times over. And really, that's what it says in Malachi 3. And if you'll, if you'll trust me and test me, I'll bless you till you can't hold it. That's the story that I was to tell on Sunday, two weeks, because I already had that Sunday prepared. So I come up to Skip and I go, and I said, uh, so I'm praying with them. And I'm like, so I pull him aside. I said, hey, Pastor Mark just shared me a story about Hannah. And he goes, Skip goes, oh, we know about Hannah. <laughs> I said, of course you do. I, I just, I said, there was a story. He said, I know. We read that story all the time. And we pray. And we have it given to us have it given to y'all. So I was just laying stuff on top of it. <laughs> Pastor number one right there. So anyway, what was so crazy about that is um, Mark gives me this tithing story. And so I tell them, they say, yeah, we know all about it. You know, incredible prayer. Uh, the next week I didn't use it because I already had something. So I was going to use it the following week. Here's the problem I had. I'm about to come up and give a tithing talk. And God blesses those at tithe. I was afraid at that point that they would take it wrong because we've already had a conversation that, that if they don't tithe, and I, I don't ever look at the tithe sheets, offering sheets, any of that stuff. We just don't look at that stuff a, a lot at that church. We just don't. And so I didn't know if they're tithe or not. I said, what if they think I'm trying to tell them that if they start tithing, <laughs> you bless them with a baby. You know what I'm saying? And I'm going to crush this family, you know, these, this couple who's already been through enough. And I was tore up about it. And I would not, would not give it. Wouldn't, and I, two more weeks went by and I was like, not going to do it. Not, you know? And one day on the way to church, God, God told me, he said, you're going to tell that story today. Good or bad, you're going to tell that story. And I was like, it's going to crush them. Like, Maybe they won't come to church. Maybe today, God will, they'll be on some trip or something. Maybe that's why God's telling me to tell the story. I get up and I, and I tell that story. And I come off the 1130 service. I'm done doing the offering and we go through service. I walk out the back double doors by the sound booth, if you guys are familiar. And I look up at the main entrance. And he and Maggie and a couple other people are up there and they're crying. And I'm like, oh my gosh. <laughs> you know, I've crushed them. And I, I, I'm like, I, and, and they're like, ow, come here. I'm like, I don't want to come here. <laughs> you know, I, I just don't. Yeah. I remember his face when he was preaching that when that sermon uh, I, I, he did not look at me he knows where we sit yeah. and he would not look at me the entire <laughs> service I thought oh man he's he's gonna get it afterward <laughs> <laughs> well the whole thing was I was like I was just scared to death and, and so I come up there and they're crying and I'm getting ready to get my head handed to me you know and, I, and I'm like I walk up and I'm like and he said he told me he said I remember you looking really down and sad when you were walking up and I didn't, he didn't, we didn't put it together until we talked. And I walk up and they say, Al, 
we're pregnant. Oh. <laughs> I was like, what? They said, yeah. They said, we're pregnant. They said, you prayed for us, and God acted, and he was there with us. And that's, that's little Samuel right there. He's two months old. Two months old now. But, um, yeah, I walked up to him, and I said, that is, God totally gave you that sermon to preach, and that was the day to give it. And sometimes in our, I wanted to tell you this the other week, but sometimes in our hesitancy, when God's bugging us for weeks to do stuff, he knows he's going to put the pressure on you. And so you find the act. And when you act, it's, it's the right time. And he will orchestrate delay and he will orchestrate it the first obedience the first time as if it was always the first time. Right. So, so do it the first time. But... I will. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean that. to be sensitive. I don't know. That, we can take it. Um, his middle name is Samuel. Braden Samuel Skilperort. And 1 Samuel 127 says, For this child we have prayed and the Lord gave us the desires of our heart. So I, I want to be sensitive to those of you who have family or yourselves who are, are still waiting on a child. And I, I want to encourage you today. The Lord hears you, and he's with you. He's not forgotten you. Yeah, that's how big our God is. That's incredible. Um, had to share that. Y'all know why now. It's, it's crazy, man. Uh,